Hey guys, so I'm back from my travels. I actually went to visit my parents in Russia and it was so wonderful after not being able to see them for over two years. Uh, and the trip was wonderful. They're doing great. And if you follow me on Instagram, I actually posted a lot of videos and photos in the highlights and I saved them. Uh, for some reason, I didn't think about shooting uh, a YouTube video, but I did take a lot of photos and a lot of short videos for Instagram. Anyway, I'm back. The fall is in full swing here in New Jersey. The colors are beautiful. So I'm going to dig the dahlias and elephant ears today. Um, and I'm going to show you again how I do it. So the dahlias are first and I'm going to be talking about that as I dig them. Now, before I cut the stalk, I actually check if every dahlia has a label. Um, now, I do use these kind of labels when I plant them out in the spring, but for the storage, I need a label around the stalk itself. And I like these labels a lot. Um, I think Erin with Impatient Gardener uses these as well. I will post a link in the description down below. And uh, let's see, what we'll do next is just cut the stalk, take all of the stakes out. Um, also, I wanted to mention is um, it is such a beautiful day to dig dahlias. Um, it's been dry for about five days and that is very important because you don't want to dig your dahlias in the rain. Uh, the tubers may come out rotten and break easily. So the next thing I do is I kind of go around with my hand. I don't know if you could see it and see where the tuber is approximately. Sometimes they go down deep. Even if I plant them shallow, they kind of go really, really deep. Um, I use a smaller shovel. You can use a fork not to damage the tuber. I kind of start digging around. This tuber is not going to be big, I can tell already. <laughs> I broke one, one root already, but that's okay. Yeah, very small, definitely. And I do have this tarp uh, because I have so many dahlias to dig. I do have this tarp and I just put it on the tarp and I drag this tarp all through the garden. And at the end of the day, I have all of my Dahlia's dug. So here are my treasures. Uh, this is probably the most of them. I think I have about 10 more in the garden somewhere. I can't find them. They're still deep in the perennials. When I uh, cut the perennials down, I will find them. But they all look uh, really healthy. They had great summer. Like, look at this one right here. You see these three stalks right here? This is three plants for next year. I could probably divide them even more. 
looks very healthy. It's missing a label, so I don't know what it is, but that's okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to drag this entire tarp in the garage for about two days to let the soil dry. Um, I do not wash them off, some people do, and that's perfectly fine. Everybody has their own methods of storing tubers. I don't uh, wash mine off though. I let the soil dry and then I'll just store them in a vermiculite um, just like this. I don't divide them in the fall because I found that um, they don't store as well if I divide them in the fall. I found some oddities as I was digging these dahlias. I want to talk about them. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so the first tubers uh, that I have here are these. Uh, you see this weird growth right here at the base of the tuber. Now this is gall. I don't know if it's leafy gall or uh, crown gall. I would have to send a sample of this plant to a university to confirm. But this is a bacterial infection. Um, the whole plant is infected and there is no cure for it at this time. So I'm going to have to throw away this entire tuber. There's another one right here. So these are actually two uh, tubers that I dug um, out of my probably 70 that had this and I remember that these were not blooming at all this summer and they were also very stunted so I'm thinking that they already came infected um, again there's nothing you can do I'm just going to have to throw these away the one uh, thing about crown gall or leafy gall is um, what you can do is good sanitary practices like disinfecting your pruners as you cut in your dahlias and um, also solarizing the soil where these dahlias were i'm going to have to solarize the soil um, just have to put plastic over it uh, for a couple of months and not grow any dahlias there next year so this is one second thing that could happen when you're growing uh, when you're digging your dahlias or is this <laughs> Uh, you can damage some of the tubers either by hitting them with the spade or if you pull them out sometimes they crack. Um, this is perfectly fine. They're still very viable tubers because the eyes are right, actually right here at the neck. Um, and tubers are just um, modified roots. So if you damage some of them um, it's still perfectly fine. The scar will heal over and they can still store very well. Now another thing, I was hoping to store these uh, dahlias right here. These are the dahlias that I got for my window box and also for the garden. They were absolutely beautiful. Um, they were known as uh, bedding dahlias. So they're actually grown from seed and a lot of times they don't form any tubers at all. You see there's no tuber. They were so beautiful and I was hoping to store them because I did not know the name of them. Um, as you can see, I just wrote down the window box. But these won't store. There is absolutely nothing. There's like a little thing right here, but this will dry out so quickly. So I'm going to throw these away. Um, also, I wanted to show you um, another thing that can happen with your dahlias. So this guy right here is the infamous Café au lait. Uh, now, cafe au lait do not form really good tubers. Um, so this was in the ground over the season. As you can see, this is all that happened. And they are famous for it. They're just not very enthusiastic about forming any tubers. Um, so they, for that reason, also don't store really well. I mean, this one is very healthy and probably can make it to the spring. But just keep in mind, if your cafe au lait did not grow as much as the other tubers, that's just what they do. Forgot to show you one more thing. Um, this tuber right here, this is Myrtle Folly. Um, it's not labeled, but I know it's Myrtle Folly because I started it from a cutting this spring. And as you can see, it formed all of these tubers just in one season and it actually gave me flowers already this year. Um, and it's ready for storage. It's perfectly viable. Um, if you want to learn how to start your dahlias from cuttings, um, I will post a video down in the description below. It's probably about three or four years old, but that's okay. I think it explains it. Um, anyway, just 
as you can see perfectly great plant just from a cutting so I am going to go ahead and um, start digging elephant ears really quick as you can see the uh, leaves have turned brown there are some good looking leaves though right there look still growing but it's definitely time for them to go inside the house I have this big guy right here I can't believe it all grew from one bulb this year it's insane so what I'm going to do first because it has all these leaves um, I'm going to take um, off some of the leaves and I use just a regular kitchen knife um, old kitchen knife I use it like a machete it's just so much easier to take off some of the weight because this guy is going to be huge like look at this I'll just take off the lower leaves and that's it and maybe the ones that are damaged from frost. Ta da! Oh my god! And lots of babies. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just shaking off the soil. What I'm going to do, actually, I'll split it right here because this is very heavy. <laughs> I can't do it. Let's see. I still can't do it. It's a good thing I've been lifting weights. This thing is enormous and heavy. Oh, there you go. Alright you guys, it's all done and it's definitely looking a lot emptier without them in this spot. Um, without them, there's tons of fine textures and the garden gets kind of muddy to me. Um, they do provide a lot of boulder texture, that pizzazz that I was looking for in this spot. So I will miss them, but let me show you what they look like right now. They are huge you guys and i completely understand why some um someone who lives in a tropical environment wouldn't plant these because they get enormous um they spread a lot they um, grow a lot of babies so i could see how they can get aggressive in the tropical environment here in new jersey it is perfect they do not run away um i can control them easily they provide this beautiful texture in the garden and they're just so fun to look at but what i'm going to do next is um, i'm going to put these guys on the tarp in the garage um, the space where i put them has to be um, kind of mild not too cold and i will let all of the leaves dry naturally all of the roots dry naturally and then i will come in a couple of weeks later 
and um, I will clean up all of the dried roots and leaves and I will put them in uh, paper bags something like this or you can use paper bags that you uh, get in the grocery store and you just put the bulb in there just this part right here no substrate is necessary they store very easily without any substrate um, and then you just check on them in January and um, you can start them again in February or March. All right, you guys, this is it for today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. And I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next video. Bye.